Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Thank you to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for 19 subscribers, 19,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. And keep subscribing, get us to 20,000, and we'll be very, very grateful. I hope you guys are doing all right, and may you stay blessed. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook as Fanny and Jesse, and feel free to interact with us. We'll be more than glad to interact with you guys too. Uh, yeah, so today I'm going to be reacting to warning from 1400 years ago, the years of deception. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, narrated in his Musnad, his great collection of hadith, on the authority of Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu Qala qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inna min waraikum sununun khadda'at Or khadda'a Yusaddaqu fiha al-kathib Wa yukathabu fiha al-sadiq Wa yu'tamanu fiha al-kha'in Wa yukhawanu fiha al-ameen وينطق فيها الرويبضة قالوا وما الرويبضة يا رسول الله قال السفيه يتحدث في أمر العامة So this authentic hadith collected on the authority of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه that Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said that ahead of you there will be years of deception during these years of deception, those who are truthful will not be accepted or believed. And those who speak lies will be believed and accepted. Those who are trustworthy will not be held in trust. And those who are who lack trust, who are not worthy of trust, will be trusted and looked up to. And du during these years, a ruwaybida, a specific type of person, will open their mouth. So they ask, what is a ruwaybida, O Messenger of Allah? What is this? He said, a foolish person speaking about public affairs speaking about matters of great importance that concern everyone. So he says ahead of you, he's speaking to the companions, that in later times there will be years of deception. So the general characteristics of the years that there will be deception, the years are not deceptive themselves, but the people, the population, the lifestyle, the values, the cultures of people will be deceptive. And deceptive means that the way they look is not reflective of their reality. That's what deception is. Their reality does not show, on the contrary. The looks is beautiful, is attractive and pleasant, yet, the reality of these years and whatever they contain is something that is way worse than that. And being deceptive means that your natural level of perception will not be able to see through that facade. Many people think deception, okay, yeah, I can figure this out. No, deception means most people will fall for the deception. They won't see it. Just like the hypocrites are deceptive people. When you see them, you see believers. They speak as believers. They behave as believers. They profess as believers. They dress up as believers. Everything about how they look like or how they come across suggests Iman and faith. And that's why most people don't figure them out. They can't find them out. But their reality is disbelief. That's what deception is. So years of deception means most people won't realize their reality and the truth of these days. 
They will fall for the deception. They will be taken for a ride. That's what it means to have years of deception. Then the Prophet ﷺ goes on to explain how this plays out, how this deception plays out. Those who are truthful, those who speak the truth, those who act in truth, those who remain true to human nature and the true values that humans are supposed to live according to, those who live in truth, those who act in truth, those who speak the truth will be looked down upon. Why? Because they will contradict the popular narrative that is prevalent in a society and a community. And because they go against it, they're not seen to be trustworthy. They're not seen to be saying the truth. They will be the anomaly. They will stand out. They will be ostracized. They will be persecuted. Accusations will be thrown at them. They will be given names. They will be seen to be the anomaly. Wrong. Why? They they, because they don't fit in. And that means most people will derive their standards, their values from what is prevalent in society from the norms, from the dominant culture and narrative. So if a crime becomes normalized and practiced by the majority of society or approved of by the majority of society, even though it's immoral, when you speak out against it, you are ostracized. You are criminalized. And not only by bad people, but by the majority. Because the majority will fall for the deception. The reference point for them comes from society. Whatever people hold on to, whatever people live according to, then that's it. So they lack the moral principles. They lack the absolute nature of truth versus falsehood, morality versus immorality. Even if the whole, most of society departs from true human nature, there will be people who will speak the truth. There will be people who refuse to be intimidated by the majority and they will hold on to the principles. And these people will be accused of being liars, immoral, and so on and so forth. Whereas, embrace immorality, falsehood, people who don't even speak the truth, they will be held in high esteem, they will be looked up to, they will be role models in society, they will be celebrated. That's the deception, but most people won't see it. Most people will see the immoral ones, the liars, they will see them as the pinnacle of society. And then they will look down upon those who speak the truth and stand up for the truth. Most people will fall for that. And it won't occur to them that we are contradicting the truth. Because they will see that the majority is upon the truth. Then those who are trustworthy, those who deserve to be trusted and held in trust, they will not be trusted. They will be held in doubt and suspicion. Whereas those who are telling lies, those who cannot be trusted with people's morality, people's well-being, those are the people whose opinion will be listened to, whose decisions will be implemented, and most people will fall for that. Immorality becomes celebrated as the best style of life and the best way to live. So the scales are altered. Everything is reversed. These are the years of deception. We have to be ready. We have to take necessary measures to protect ourselves from the deception because once you become, once you fall into this deception, you become part of the machine of deception 
and you will start fighting the truth unknowingly because you're living from a state of ghafla, unconsciousness, unawareness. You have fallen for the deception. You have become one of its tools to propagate it and promote it more. So it's important for us to live our lives conscious, being aware and not become desensitized to that deception. And one important principle in order to protect ourselves from that is to carefully calculate and be very meticulous about where you take your standards from. Your value system, where does it come from? What is it based? Is it based on social evidence and how the majority live? Or do you have more absolute sources for your principles, your values and your morality? What I actually love and appreciate about this video is the fact that it was predicted years ago and now we're talking about it, actually having the conversation about it. Um, I would love to believe uh, that people some years back were not that aware but we're, we're living in a generation that we're more aware now that sometimes news can be fake. Sometimes the information we get may be fake. As compared to years back when we said, okay, it's in the news, it's a fact. Okay, this person told me this, it's a fact. The president said this, it's a fact. Oh, this celebrity does this, it's a fact. So the fact that we can sit here, have a conversation about how certain things are unreal and certain, the fact that sometimes we're, um, we're throwing away values to just fit in. I'd love to believe and advise people to always stand out. Don't always, what's it called, I've forgotten it. Don't always jump onto something just to fit in, to, um, to please society. I actually wrote a short poem about it on my Instagram. You can actually follow me on, on Instagram at Safani L and just check it out. I actually wrote something about these standards of seeking uh, society's approval was what seeking everyone's approval around us but not ours we live for other people but not ourselves we live for other people but not god today we can make a video stage a breakup on uh funny and jesse 2.0 so that people may click to get views and we can drag that storyline until we feel like you know what i think we're tired now let's get back to be get back together for more views which is just insane there's many other examples that i'd love to give but we'll keep them for another time let me know what you guys think and at the end of the day i feel like once you find yourself figured out yourself or in the process of figuring out yourself and um let god guide you you're going to be you're going to seek society's approval less because you're going to be living for God and for yourself more. Let me know what you think. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.